Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk you through how to use Google Classroom from the student perspective or from the student view. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you're able to get to your spot where you're able to access your classes. Again, we have showed you how to do this, but you go to classroom.google.com or another way to navigate is if you're on any Google page, you can click this nine dot toggle and it will open up the Google apps and you click classroom. It will bring you to the space where you're logged into your student account or students are logged into their account and from there they're able to see all of the classes they are enrolled in so here are the classes that i'm currently enrolled in as a student are 5c math and 5c homeroom you notice right away that you're able to see if there are assignments for that particular class that, and when they're coming up. It's nice because at a glance, you're able to see what you need to do. And as a parent, you're able to see what a child or student may need to do as well. And if you notice, if you hover over it, you could be able to go directly to that assignment. I'm gonna take it a little bit more slowly though, so that you're able to see the full scope of what Google Classroom has to offer. From this particular page, you'll notice your three dot toggle here. If you click on it, you can move it or unenroll. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I recommend just leaving it where it is, but just so you know what those dots are, as well as down here, you can actually open your work directly from this page and not go to the actual Google Classroom. I'm gonna click so that you see what it is, but it will take you directly to the assignments that need to be done. And over it'll also over here will also show you um, what has been returned or what's missing and those elements as well. So that's something to keep in mind that it's like a quick glance reference spot. Also, if there are assignments that have been given, you'll see this in a few different spots through Google Classroom. But if there are assignments that have been given that either are in a Google Doc version or in Google Slides, they will always be in this folder. So any content that a student has a need to refer to it quickly that they know is in their drive somewhere, they can get it directly from the 5C or whatever the class's homeroom is for to, in order to access that information. So that's something else that is good to know. Now, what you really need to understand is what it will look like when you go into the classroom and what the benefits are. If again, if I want quick assignments here, it's nice that I can access it, but you really want to go directly into the class because that is where the teacher is going to have assignments. And you notice if I click here and click in different spots, it's not going to go anywhere. But if I need to actually hover over the name, of the class and then it will take me directly into the room. So when you first come into the classroom, you see a banner from your teacher, but then you'll see that you're in something called the stream. And here that is where there will be a message from your teacher or it is where you're able to see work and assignments that are coming up. So over here it says upcoming assignments in the same way that it was on the other spot where all the classes are you are able to see what's coming up specifically for this class. And to point out, you have here a message. Now, not all teachers will use this, but it is it acts as an announcement page. So here in this one, it just says, welcome to week eight of distance learning, gives a quick reference um, to the checklist and the, the schedule below for specials. But then one thing that is written here in the sample for a student is something that's really important for teachers to understand but for parents to understand as well as you're helping a student navigate Google Classroom. So it says here that here in our class stream you will be able to write comments or ask questions for the good of the group. However, whatever you write can be seen by everyone, including the teacher and your name is included. If you have specific questions about assignments, write a private message to your teacher directly in the assignment you have a question about. So I will show you that specifically when we go into classwork. But if you notice here, students have the ability to add a comment. And so teachers will encourage them to add a comment if it's specific or they wanna share something that is related. But overall, the teacher will create a class community 
around how to properly use this tool so that everything that they post will have their name associated with it and it is public to the group if it is here in the stream. So that's something important to note. Below, if you continue down, you'll see that there are the assignments as well here in the stream in the order that they are assigned. So that there are multiple ways to get to assignments. I'm gonna come up a little bit further here. And now we're gonna focus here on the classwork tab. So I recommend clicking on classwork so you're able to see everything a little more clearly in one spot, but really Google Classroom makes it super easy to be able to do what you know Google Classroom is for and that's completing assignments. So if I click on classwork, I'm taken here and it's nice because your first time in it tells you you're able to track your progress and see a list of your work and its current status. So you can view your work over here on the tab. So as you're going through that view your work spot is the exact same place that we were taking at the beginning. So I'll be able to know if it's been graded or if it's assigned. So for the individual classes at the front, it's a quick reference, but here it's also, you're also able to find it within the classroom. Coming back over here, you'll also notice that there is Google Calendar and teachers may or may not utilize the calendar, but also there is the Class Drive folder, which I also showed you in the other section of how you're able to get to that. So now we're actually going to click on assignments within the classwork stream so that you're able to see you know how it works in the different assignments that may be given an example of a few so you'll notice that teachers may choose to have an overarching heading or a topic area and if you click on the side it will go directly to that topic area or if you're listed at all topics it will show all areas so it, here it's specifically broken down into content area so we're going to start here with the first assignment and it says it has a little question here and this means this one is a question so if i click on it, it says what does it mean to make an inference and then it gives the description below and it get this is really just like a quick view of the assignment but to actually submit the assignment you need to click view question I click on view question now I see the exact same information there but then I'm also able to fully answer it so once I watch the video you'll notice that if you click on the video it opens it right directly in the space that you're in so it doesn't send you out to another website or to another window it does it all directly in the same space so once you're finished with the video you just click the arrow and it takes you back now you're able to answer the question. If it's one that's just a question, you, the question is in bold. What does it mean to make an inference? And then over here is where you respond. And you would type your answer here. And once you type your answer, you're able to click turn in. So one piece to really pay attention to as well that you'll notice is that there's a class comment option, again, that the comment can be made to the class, but teachers will encourage students to make private comments so that the teacher will be notified once a comment is made and they're able to get back to that student and answer questions that they may have. So I'm gonna go back up to here and I'm actually gonna click turn in my answer. And it lets me know that the parameters that my teacher has set up is that I will not be able to make changes to my answer after I submit. And that is up to the individual teacher based on individual assignments. So please make sure that you know this you pay attention to this box because it gives you the opportunity to cancel and go back and change the answer if you think about it a little more deeply before responding or if the student does. So click turn in. I'm going to turn in that assignment. And you notice even once I turn it in, I'm still able to write a comment if I have a comment for private comments to my teacher or um, class comment. So now I'm going to come back over here. And then if you notice I clicked over a little too far, it actually takes me out to classes where I can go all the way out. 
or I can just click back at 5C Homeroom. It'll take me back here and I can click back on Classwork. So no matter what, how, if you get out of a space that you wanna be in, you can always navigate back to your Classwork fairly easily. So I'm gonna show you another type of assignment I'm going to click on vocabulary here and this one I'm going to click view assignment and again it tells me how I turn it in and this one because it's a different type of file where it is actually a Google Slides document that is housed in Drive it says here when you're ready to submit all of your files for this assignment remember to turn it in so we're going to walk through what that will look like as well so over here it says please complete the attached for section 16a through 16e in wordly wise so i'm going to come over here and i'm going to click on the your work portion so once i click on your work it automatically names it for the student so the student does not have to go in and change the name or do anything. Their name is automatically attached to the assignment. They go in, they complete the assignment, they do all the elements that they need to do, and then the document will autosave. So once you're finished or the student is finished with the work, they then come back over to where they were for the assignment and they've completed it. They've done all their work for it, and then they are either ready to turn it in or they want to check some other pieces. So here you notice you might say, well, what is this? Completed a weekly practice book pages. Well, this is actually a rubric. So if you click the drop down arrow for it, you're able to actually see how it will be graded. So Teachers can choose to create a rubric that so that students have it to follow. They know, well, if I did if I did all the sections, but I don't have complete sentences or punctuation, I'm going to earn an eight. Or if I'm missing sections, I'm only going to earn five points and all of these elements as well. So I finished my work. It automatically um, saves in Drive as I'm working on it. And then as soon as I'm ready to turn it in, I have to make sure I click turn in. If I do not turn it in, then it is still, it will stay in my assigned assignments space. It will say, it will read that green, you know, spot here that says assigned. So I'm gonna click turn in and it says here, one attachment will be submitted and here it is here. So I'm gonna click turn in. And now my assignment is turned in. So maybe I want to come back and go, oh, you know what? I want to do a little bit more on that. I can actually click unsubmit. And it says unsubmit to add or change attachment. Don't forget to resubmit. So it continually gives that reminder to students as well. So I can unsubmit as if I would like to, to fix things. If I notice, oh, you know what? I didn't complete that section. So that is how to do that piece. So now I'm going to head back out to, to go back to my classwork again. And we're going to talk about another type of assignment. So I'm going to go down here to the science section. And this one is a quiz. So I'm going to click on here where it says circulatory system assessment. It just says complete the quiz below. And this is a basic quiz so that you understand how it works. But I click... This is the answer in this case. It, I know that it's worth five points to answer this. It's automatically attached to the student's ID number and I hit submit. And then you can view your score immediately, immediately or you can go back and open the assignment. So if I, let's see what happens if you click view score, it opens a new window. And I'll say this answer is incorrect and I'm not getting the points. And that could be for a few reasons. In this particular case, since I made the sample assignment, um, I did not verify that that was the correct answer. So in this case, it is teacher error. But I'm going to go back and I can open assignment as well. And by clicking open assignment, let's let it load, it will bring me back to the place where I was where um, I submitted the assessment and it will tell me that it's it has been submitted already I've already turned it in when I complete 
a quiz, it automatically turns it in. So I could also just stay over, go back to the tab I already had and navigate that way. But if I click that button, it will take me here. So I'm going to navigate back to the class. And then I am going to actually go back to my classwork because I want to go back to the spot where it says view your work. So if I click view my work, I'm able to see, okay, now I've turned these items in already and I, you know, I decided to unsubmit my Wordly Wise pages and they are still assigned. If I click returned with grade right now, I've had no work items that have been returned just yet. But I can go back and see what is still assigned. It's the one item that is still assigned for me. So I'm going to hit the back arrow. And then as teachers return finished grades and fully grade assignments, then students will be able to see here in return with grade what their grades are or ultimately what things have been recorded as for them. Going back out to <clears throat> excuse me, 5C Homeroom. One last piece that I would like to show you is the people section. So we didn't touch on it yet, but it's pretty simple. The people section really just shows you the teachers that are assigned to that class or that are on that particular class. So <clears throat> students in this case are not going to be able to use the email option because if they click it, they do not have email access currently with uh, Google Classroom. That's why teachers will be encouraging them to use the private chat for specific assignments. So just so you know, this is just, just so you're aware of the teachers that are assigned to the class. However, you're not able to email them directly through this uh, Google Classroom. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to your classroom teacher as they are learning um, to use Google Classroom, they will be a great resource for you to understand how to best support your children.